Do we have anything to fear from EVs arriving here from China? Are they rubbish? Should I consider one? Why does Tesla manufacture there? Well, let's take a look at what's actually happening. China has long been a manufacturer of most of what we buy and use here in the UK. The list is almost endless, but includes most clothing, even designer labels, most electronics, including your iPhone and your iPad, and almost 100% of your cheap plastic toys. It's all down to price. China pays its workers far less than we do in the West, and has much lower safety standards, allowing for working practices that are illegal elsewhere. But they're cheap. Many multinational companies have developed products over here, but then decided to go with manufacturing them in China to make them, well, more profitable. And profit is the name of the game. Think Dyson, who invented a brand new technology with his vacuum cleaners, or Apple with their iPhones and iPads. There is nothing inherently wrong with this practice as long as the company's minimum standards are met, and they are very keen to do exactly that. They make sure that the factory and its workers produce products every bit as good as if they were made at home with them standing over watching. But it's just much cheaper. And they're also free to switch countries if one suddenly offers to do it to the same standards, but cheaper. Most clothing manufacturing now is shifting to Vietnam or India. Or well, simply put, it makes no difference where the product is manufactured. It's the design and quality control that matters. Design it properly, make it properly, and China or anywhere else is fine. And so we come to EVs. Are Chinese EVs rubbish? Well, yes, in the beginning, just like the Japanese were back in the 60s and 70s. China's always had its eyes on car manufacturing to sell to the West. They looked on with envy at what Japan had achieved in just a few decades, going from a laughing stock to world leaders, highly respected, Highly successful, highly profitable. They analysed the situation well over 20 years ago and concluded, rightly or wrongly, that it would take them also about 20 years to achieve world dominance, success and respect. But they concluded that by then, internal combustion engine cars would be past their best, in decline, and EVs would be the future and a gro rapidly growing market. So they skipped the internal combustion engine car stage and went all in on initially hybrids and then BEVs, battery electric vehicles. They offered huge subsidies to battery and EV manufacturers and even larger subsidies to their customers, the Chinese people. The EV industry took off in a massive way. Initially, just like the Chinese found, the cars were ridiculed, unexciting, unreliable. But over the years, they became better. They overcame these failings, and about 10 years ago, they scaled back hybrids and quietly started manufacturing some of the best BEVs in the world. They also copied the world leader at that time, Tesla, learned what they were doing, what their customers wanted, and copied them shamelessly. Then, when Tesla opened this Gigafactory in Shanghai in 2018, they were finally able to see in really great detail exactly how an EV should be designed and produced to make it attractive to Western buyers. From these beginnings, BYD, NIO, SAIC, Xpeng, Geely and dozens of other Chinese companies started and they began making really good EVs, growing at a frightening pace. At the same time, China became the world leader in battery technology and manufacture, overtaking the likes of Panasonic in Japan and LG in South Korea. With a great product and a great subsidy scheme for everyone, they quickly achieved mass production that allowed them to reduce prices even further. China EV sales in China skyrocketed until very recently, when the Chinese economy suddenly hit a brick wall. First, they had massive shutdowns to protect their population from the pandemic. Then, just as they were recovering, the property and financial markets collapsed, throwing the country into a crisis from which it has not yet learned how to recover. Well, this leaves EV and battery factories with a shrinking home market, reducing profits, 
So they simply turned their attention to the West. Here, they could sell at a much higher price, even after shipping costs and import duties. And in the West, we were still buying. Now recently, all the big Chinese EV companies have begin, begun to release their EVs into our markets, starting with the MG4. Now few people realise it is owned by SAIC in China. They merely bought the old bankrupt company and kept the name. Helps with marketing. Likewise, Volvo were bought by Geely in 2010. And Polestar were once owned by Volvo, but also now wholly Chinese owned. Many people have, believe, have bought these cars, believing them to be European or British. They are not. So are the Chinese EVs rubbish. Well, <laughs> on the contrary, these cars are extremely good. They have over a decade of mass production history, so the quality is now really good. They've developed their own IT and infotainment systems, and these too are remarkably good. The EVs are purpose-designed as EVs, so are fully integrated, not assembled from bits bought everywhere, from different suppliers around the world, for ICE cars. That is what Western automakers have been doing for decades, merely assembling. And the Chinese are cheap. Like all cars, there are good ones and bad ones, but that also applies to Ford, GM, BMW, even Porsche, who have spectacular favor, failures and constant critical vehicle recalls. The Chinese know exactly what they're doing. They make great cars. Open your eyes. Look at them. Try them. See if you like them. If you do, just like you do with your iPhone, ignore where they are made and buy one. Well, thanks for watching. There's a next one in this series, and that will look at VW and Mercedes and their involvement in China. And that is a very different story indeed. Please subscribe so you don't miss when we release this one. Thanks again for watching. I'm Dave.